eyes look gummy, look crummy, look fake. I can't escape the dull heartache, knowing that my weather's been taken from me. Asking myself, how can it be? Good morning. This is Kate Willens broadcasting to you with blue skies above from sunny Northern California just after a storm. And so they've let the blue skies be and they sure are beautiful and we sure want to bring them back. And this is American Freedom Radio and we are live. And today we have two very special guests for you, which I'll introduce in just a moment. But I'd like to begin this morning with a kind of spiritual contemplation, if you will, about nature and just how important nature is to us and how those that are trying to take our nature from us don't realize the importance of it. They must not, or they wouldn't be doing this. Jesus said, consider the lilies of the field. They toil not, neither do they spin. But Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. And it said that the Buddha gave a sermon on a single flower, and he didn't say a word, and that that inspiration was the genesis for Zen Buddhism. And so this beautiful nature that we have around us, there are heroes that are trying to protect that nature, and you're going to be hearing from two of them this morning. There's Deborah Whitman, who is, wait a minute here, I hope that I'm still on. (laughs) Yeah, it's Deborah Whitman, who is um, the head of Environmental Voices. And she began Environmental Voices, and she's going to tell you about that. And she's been really at the forefront of the grassroots environmental movement here in California. And we also have Lisa Thomas, who is just a mover and a shaker as far as the the movement to end geoengineering. And she is heading up, spearheading a wonderful event that we're going to tell you about on January 13th called uh, California for what is it, California for Clear Skies or... Um, oh, natural, well. natural Skies. <laughs> okay, ladies, I'd like to introduce you now since uh, I need your help here. Um, are you both on? Yeah. Yes. Okay, terrific. Okay, so um, I, I wanted to just begin uh, with, with Lisa. First of all, hello, Deborah, and hello, Lisa. And will you please give us the correct name for the event? Oh, California for Natural Skies. Okay, uh, Lisa, good morning. How are you doing? Hi. Thanks for having me on. Oh, very I'm happy fine. that you're How are you, here. Kate? I'm great. Um, Lisa, California for Natural Skies, how did you come up with this idea? And can you tell us a little bit about your work to how you got into the whole geoengineering movement or anti-geoengineering movement to begin with? Um, well, the, the California for Natural Skies is the result of a meeting that we had with our group, Sierra Nevada Geoengineering Awareness. We have monthly meetings here in Grass Valley. And um, our group sat one Saturday. We have them the first Saturday of every month and um, in a community room at a, a local food co-op. And um, we were trying to come up with a, a name for this, this event that we were talking about. And somebody said, well, what are we for? And, and I said, natural skies, something like that. <laughs> you know, everybody kind of, almost everybody said it together. And... Uh, and we and I said, how about California for Natural Skies? And, and you know, it, everybody really kind of put the ideas in together, and it came up. So, um, and I like that, you know, that we're not saying we're against something. I mean, obviously we we <laughs> we are we don't like geoengineering. <laughs> yeah. But um, but it, you know, we wanted a positive spin on it. We want our skies back to the way they used to be. And um, so I am the co-founder of. Um, Sierra Nevada Geoengineering Awareness, and we take in, we, we're based in Nevada County, but we take in a few other counties, and um, we've kind of been pulling together other groups and trying to get other groups going, giving them the support that they um, that they need to to get organized, and so the idea for this event, I mean, it's, it's an, of course, having an event at the state capitol has been on my mind for a long time, but, you know, we were, I was, I've just been kind of hoping that some of the main leaders would step up and just put something together. When it didn't happen, um, there was an event, uh, a rally, just a couple of months ago, maybe three or four months ago, that somebody put together and um, put it up on Facebook. And quite a few people showed up. I think we had about 60, 60 people there. And it was very successful. And we actually managed to put together 
um, some a couple new groups through that. We met, I met some people and gave them some information. Would you contact. would you tell us um, where the, some of these groups are? That is, if people are listening in those counties, the, how they can get involved? Just we have a t- new group that just started in Tuolumne County, and okay. um, so this is actually California for Natural Skies has actually become a coalition. Uh, we have another one in South Bay Geoengineering Awareness down in the San Jose area. Um, there are several that have already been in existence. There's Chico Skywatch, SoCal Skywatch. Um, there's, of course, Environmental Voices, uh, our group, uh, and we take in quite a few counties. There's, um, let's see, Reno Skywatch, of course, it's just on the other side of the border. Um, we have, I think we have uh, nine groups involved in this. And, and I have to mention a Sonoma County Geoengineering Awareness, which right. has not been terribly active except online, but, but we're planning to come. So, Good. Well, you know, it, it doesn't – one of the things that we started doing as a group that made all the difference in the world, and I, I can't believe how long it didn't occur to me to do this, but um, um, it was just to meet once a month. It made all the difference in the world. And we started out with uh, four of us at a picnic table in the park near where I live. <laughs> And um, just we had an, an outreach, and a couple more people showed up when we did the outreach, and we put a few more people on our email list. And now when we have a meeting, it's almost 20 people, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of the same people showing up again mm-hmm. and again. But we have a huge mailing list now. So people, we have a wide window of time that we do it so that people can come. We do a four-hour meeting so that people can come and go as they need to so they don't have to be there the whole time, but they can still participate. Mm-hmm. And we keep it consistently in the same location on the same day of the month. Um, the first Saturday of the month, and, and that's really worked. So we're using that to, to that that model to kind of help other groups along in in getting started. But it, it really takes a couple of strong people who are willing to put in the time and the energy that it takes to get a group right. to keep a group together. Right. And what so, do you do at those meetings that, that stretch for you know four hours? People can kind of come in. Do they get supplies or what? What happens at those meetings? Um, uh, various things. I mean, it, it just kind of depends on what's going on. Normally, we have an outreach that's being planned at the time or one that has just happened. Um, at one, about two meetings ago, we started forming committees so that we could have certain people looking into health issues and, and supporting people with their health mm-hmm. um, and, um, you know, kind of just putting all that information together for people. Mm-hmm. And then um, we have another group that is another committee that's been put together for looking into fire and insurance issues around this because a lot is changing as a result of what's happening, as a result of what's being sprayed. So we have, and and that the person heading up that committee is a physicist and he has like three master's degrees. So we've wow. got some really good people. We've got a couple of lawyers in our group. Um, we, you know, we've got some very well educated people and mm-hmm. then just people who really passionately care and they're willing to go the extra mile mm-hmm. to get this mm-hmm. stuff. By the way, I took so I took a look at your website. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Um, I took a look at your website last night. That's Sierra Nevada Geoengineering Awareness, S N G A Awareness uh, dot Weebly dot com, and it's just really an excellent website. There's so much information. There are many many good articles on the website for people that are looking for support when talking to friends and families and other people about geoengineering. So I really commend you for the work that you and your team did on that site. And I really encourage people to go to it and get inspired. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the event then? What's going to be happening on the 13th of January at the Capitol Steps? We'll be on the North Steps. And um, our our goal for the day, we have, of course, you're going to be there singing, and we have another band coming, a blues band. We have a hip-hop artist coming all the way from South Africa who does a a song about geoengineering awareness, and um, he he felt passionately, having not seen it in Africa, and then he went to Europe and saw what was going on, and he was very upset and moved to to um, make a song about it. So he'll be coming, and then we have another rapper coming from Carson City, um, Nevada. So he'll be coming down, and in that's that that will liven things up. I mean, that's and it will draw people, and that's an important thing. But the Absolutely. other, we have 11 speakers coming, including uh, Michael Murphy, who's been – he's a producer of What in the World Are They Spraying and Why in the World Are They Spraying, um, and he's done an excellent job on those, so he'll be, he'll be doing some speaking. Um, I will uh, hopefully be able to say a few words more than anything just to motivate people to realize that 
you know, we're, we're, people tend to think that this is way too big of an issue to take on and they're never, we're never going to conquer this, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, there's a saying that I love that I, I say this to people a lot. If you think you are too small to make a difference, you've never spent the night with a mosquito. <laughs> and that is something I live by because if everybody gets together and everybody mm-hmm. keeps on trying, that's mm-hmm. the only thing that's ever going to turn exactly the of our planet around. Exactly. And, um, and if everybody gives up, throws up their hands, and, and just lets whoever feels that they're in charge be in charge, that's how it's going to be. Um, but, but I intend to make a sort of a short speech that just motivates people to say, I am big enough, I am strong enough, I can do this, I can make a difference. And no matter how small that difference is, you know, it, if, if, if a person can do no more than uh, pass out flyers for a, a day here and there or go and be at an outreach or – educate a few people or donate money if that's what they have, you mm-hmm. know, just do their small part. It, mm-hmm. it all adds together and makes a big difference. Lisa, I just want to say I, I'm so inspired by what you just said. And I really hope that this show gets circulated out there because what you said is pretty much the most important thing anybody could say with respect to fighting this movement. This is our time. Our time is now. And this is our battle. And we're the people that are down here that need to fight it, that are aware of what's going on. And if we that's don't right. do it, who will? You know, and what's going to happen to this it. earth? And can we look our, our kids in the face and say, well, you know, we didn't feel like it. We were too busy because we had to go to the movies or the mall or wherever. Yeah. We, we cannot just give up and say, well, I hope it's okay for my kids. Um, I know that my kids would rather see me, you know, spending my time running around with them, and, and, I, and I do dedicate quite a bit of time to doing that. I make the time to do that because that's important too, but I would never be able to look at my kids in the face 20 years from now and say, well, I just didn't feel like it. I just didn't have time, and, um, and it matters. And, yeah. and, and by doing this kind of work, you're setting an example for them mm-hmm. to rise up themselves someday and mm-hmm. say, enough is enough. This, mm-hmm. this is my planet, and I have to mm-hmm. live here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just want to say, and then, Deborah, I'm totally, I can hear your thoughts going, I want to say something, and I, I'm about to invite you in. So just, I just want to say one thing, though, very selfishly, and that is that we all have our, our own way of gifting this movement. As you said, whether it's money, whether it's handing out flyers, whether it's time. And that this is, I heard Deborah Whitman say, this is going to be a long fight. And so, Deborah, on that note, um, I'll just close by saying that it's going to be a long fight. And we carry the torch in many different capacities at different times during our journey. So at some times we're going to be able to be more active. And at some times maybe all we can do is the flyers and the money. And Deborah Whitman, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and I'm a little hoarse, so please forgive me. I've just gotten <laughs> over a cold. So. Okay. Um, but I want to thank you, Kate, first for um, having both Lisa and I on this show. It's very important to get this information out. And, Lisa, I want to thank you for putting this event on and getting it going because I'm so excited about it. I um, wanted to do this since 2006 when I first learned about geoengineering, and and now I'm seeing (laughs) this come true, and I'm really excited about it. But um, so thanks for having us on. I'm glad you're part of it. Well, I'm so delighted that you're here. Sorry, Lisa. I just want to say I'm so thrilled that you're both here, and this is a show for activists. And boy, you're you're sure setting a great example. So, Deborah. how did you learn about geoengineering? How did you become involved with it? I know that, that Environmental Voices, your organization, deals with many, many environmental issues, geoengineering being one of them. So if you could just speak about why you think this issue is so important and how it affects all the other issues that you are, or maybe not all of them, but, but many of them that, that your group is fighting for. Well, um, I'm going to speak about my own experience on this, and it's related to health. Mm-hmm. I, um, in 2006, well, actually in 2004, I had to retire early from a high-paying job with the state of California as a contract administrator and small business advocate, and I was getting sicker and sicker every year, and I finally had to retire. So with that said, I started researching what is making me so sick. Why am I going in emergency a couple times a month with heart attack symptoms and, and on and on. In 2006, a friend called me and 
said, go research chemtrails. And I said, what, are you talking about a contrail from a jet? No, no, it's too big. My brother told me to call you because he was dying of cancer, and he was researching and found this out. The very first website I pulled up, I knew that's why I was going in an emergency with respiratory and heart attack symptoms. So I had just become a new member of the Sierra Club in Yolo County, and I took pictures of what I was seeing and tried to go in there two different occasions at their meetings and bring this issue up. And one of their board members is a scientist. I'm not sure which department he works with with the state, but he shut me down, wouldn't let me speak on the issue, and I was trying to explain how it was making me sick. So I got angry and resigned from Sierra Club and started Environmental Voices. Mm -hmm. So our mission is to provide research and education about toxic chemicals and how they affect our health and the environment. So that started in 2006. We became a 501c3 nonprofit in um, 2010. And we do provide information about toxic chemicals. There are so many issues, you know, with the fracking, with the GMOs, and we provide information, all of that. But the key one that is close to my heart is the geoengineering. I know it's making people sick. They may not feel the symptoms like I was feeling, and but they are breathing those toxic chemicals. They build up in your tissues. And over time, it weakens your immune system, and you start getting sick and dying. That's happening to people. That's happening to our trees. Our whole planet is being destroyed because of toxic chemicals. And the most important one, I believe, is through the geoengineering programs that are going mm-hmm. on worldwide. I know. It's it's pretty devastating. You can't be breathing aluminum, barium, strontium, yeah. titanium. Those are just some of the chemicals that are in the patent. Who knows? There's a whole lot of other things that we're finding in fiber samples and in rainwater samples and everything. We can't live much longer breathing air like what we're breathing now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, it's causing, you know, it's it's causing pollution in the soil and the water. It, it just can't be removed. It's no, it can't. And come down, and and there it is. And you know, how much longer can they continue to spray these things before we have such widespread contamination that that no amount of remediation is going to fix it? Well, well, I will some say, of the consequences. Oh, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I think I, I definitely want to ask you, Deborah, about some of the protocols that you found that that are helpful that you can recommend. But I also want to say that I think it's super important to even though this is going on to keep as positive a frame of mind as possible because how we think as you know affects our biology and it affects our cells it affects our emotions um and so as we as we work to to find detox remedies um and to do our activism to try and stay uh, meditating on those blue skies and that's why i love lisa your idea about what am i for I'm for natural skies. So yes, we're against all these other things. I just, I just want to frame it in a positive way though, if we can, because, um, I think it's important. I think it's essential. Yeah, it can bring you down. It, 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 there, that's one of the, I think one of the key roles that I play out there on, on the internet and in meetings is, is to help people stay positive. For the first year that I was dealing with this, I, I became I don't want to say depressed exactly. I just simply didn't want to live any longer. I, mm-hmm. I, and it wasn't a form of depression. It was just, oh my God, if I've got to deal with this, if this is what life has become, and mm-hmm. because I couldn't go outside the first year, that mm-hmm. it got really bad. I literally, mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. lived to be outside, mm-hmm. and um, I was stuck inside, and so I, I put that energy that to use to, to make a slideshow and websites, and and um, and it was it was I ha- I had to use my energy somehow, but it was really. Uh, a downer to to be stuck mm-hmm. inside all the time. And when I went outside, I would get so sick every time, couldn't breathe. And um, and and so I've learned. I'm kind, I'm kind of past that stage of it, and I've learned to live it. And honestly, it hasn't been quite as bad lately here as it was during 2013 and most of 2014. It's it, it's we have more days that are I wouldn't say more sunny days, but days where there are more there's more sun shining through. It's not the white, mm-hmm. white mm-hmm. haze every single day, day in and day out, mm-hmm. like it had been. Um, I think it's so, interesting also that they're letting rains come. Or, you know, I don't know if it's El Nino or what's what's natural anymore and what isn't, because as we know, our weather is being you know, modified constantly 
but rains are coming and i and i feel again those rains are toxic in some you know just to some significant degree but at least at least water is coming and washing the air and it i know this morning it just feels it feels beautiful and it feels that nature you know as 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 activists have said like dane wigington um when when nat- when we when this program stops nature will rebound and it will rebound quickly so yeah. um well, you can but- see that i mean we come down the mountain from grass valley into the area that we live and it, after it has rained we can see across the sacramento valley from where we are yeah and you can't see that i mean since the spraying got so heavy i watched week in and week out and took pictures for a year a straight year yeah. As they hazed that valley up, we used yeah. to be able to see Sutter Buttes. And we, after, you know, it was a matter of just a couple of months before Sutter Buttes were nearly invisible. Exactly. And they kept spraying and spraying and yep. spraying until they were completely, and they haven't been visible since. But even during a rainstorm, you can see them. And after the rainstorms, my, my son, the other day, we were in the car, and he said, my God, Mom, look how far we can see. Mm-hmm. Because the rain washed some of that right, stuff. Right, but of course, again, of course, it's coming down into our soil. Exactly. So, so, and then, you know, I, I look at our animals, and I look at our plant life, and, like, how long can they, you know, transmogrify? Can they, can they take this and digest this stuff, and into what? Um, I think our plant life, though, even if it is taking in a lot of toxicity, is doing a tremendous amount of work to transform it for us still. But Deborah, I'd like to go back to you a minute and um, and hear from you more about about how you you feel people can take the best care of their health given this program. Uh, yes, first I'd like to go over some of the side effects of some of the chemicals that are listed in patents uh, regarding these programs. Uh, aluminum is one of them and some of the side effects to that it crosses the blood brain barrier and it can disrupt uh, blood flow to the brain so some of the chronic exposures would be Alzheimer's uh, there's links to autism and other things it also causes chronic pulmonary disorders and inflammations almost everybody I talk to has illnesses that's related to inflammation well when you have heavy metals in your um, body you can't help but um, have inflammation so barium is another one that we're testing for we've we've done tree bark samples uh, rainwater and snowpack samples uh, and uh, it will increase your blood pressure high blood pressure Mm-hmm. It causes heart rhythm changes. I talked to a lot of people that have irregular heartbeats, and that was That's one of, one of the, my, the things that affects me the most. Yeah, me too, because I could tell when they started spraying in the mornings because I would wake up, my heart would go crazy, and mm-hmm. I knew they were spraying that morning. So it causes stomach irritation. How many people do you know have irritable bowel syndrome and, and other issues related to your stomach? Muscle weakness, change in nerve reflexes. Swelling of the brain, liver, and kidney, it causes heart damage. Another chemical that we believe in, which is a radioactive one, is strontium, and that um, causes cancer, such as leukemia and bone cancer. Then another one we've been testing for is titanium, and uh, it um, will produce lung tumors in rats. And another one in my early research, I haven't heard about it lately, but my early research was sulfur hexafluoride. Well, sulfur hexafluoride blocks oxygen to the heart and it causes asphyxiation. And the reason I believe that this is in it, not only because of my early research, but I would have symptoms of it. And one of the symptoms is your voice will change and it gets deep, kind of like helium will make it really, you know, high. This mm-hmm. will make your uh, voice kind of deep and raspy. Mm-hmm. And um, then uh, that was one of the reasons I think I was going into emergency because I wasn't getting oxygen to my heart and it was triggering heart attack symptoms. I'd go into emergency, I'd be put on oxygen, I'd be there for about five hours while they did all their testing. They wouldn't find anything wrong, but by the time they were done with everything, I felt wonderful and walk out of there. And then about a month or so later, it would accumulate in my body and I'd get sick and end up back in emergency. I really think that was one of the chemicals was bad. So once I learned what to do, I started um, chelating. And I personally used a product called Zeolite. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it did not um, 
the company that made it does not manufacture the same product that I took. Well, guess but, what? Um, I, I know the product. You... I know the product yeah. where it went. Okay, it went to a place. You're speaking about Aoria Zeolite, I think. And it went to a company called Touchstone Limited. Mm-hmm. And Touchstone Limited now has the good Zeolite. They have two forms of it. And one is a spray that actually... What I, I just want to say that the Aorea zeolite and now the Touchstone zeolite is completely purified because if you go to Whole Foods and you buy regular zeolite, it also has toxicity that can be very, very harmful. And so the scientists at Touchstone have now formulated a spray that you spray three sprays three times a day and supposedly it detoxes your entire system except for the intestines, which their other form of zeolite, which is most similar to what you were taking from Aorea, the drops, uh, that will also um, clean out the intestines. So between both of them, it's, you know, I, I can't even believe how simple it is. There mm-hmm. must be more to it. But those two products, um, I highly recommend Touchstone Limited, and you can find it online. Okay. The, the, um, spray yeah, the company on, was you know, Aorea. I'm looking um, the, on, online right here and getting much on Touchstone Essentials. Is that the exactly, same thing? Exactly, exactly. Thank you. I, I just can't do that while I'm on with you, but it's Touchstone Essentials, and the product is called Pure Body is the spray, and okay. the other is just a, a liquid dropper of zeolite. Um, yeah. I'm now ordering mine from Nutra Medical. It's Dr. Bill Digo, and he's an activist on this issue, and he's a doctor that used to treat um, Air Force pilots that would do these programs. So it's Nutra Medical is the one I'm using now. Okay. But, um, so what I'm recommending people do is f- try to find a naturopathic doctor and get tested for metals in the body. And the tests run about $65 on an average. And uh, so that would give you an idea of what you have in your body. And, and a lot of people are having a, a lot sample? of uranium. Is it a hair sample? A lot sample? of uranium. Huh? Is it a hair sample that... that Yes, this was a hair sample. That's yeah. the cheapest. There's other things you can do. Um, I'd like to say to that, to that right there, the Sierra Nevada Geoengineering Awareness, we're actually pulling together the results of samples uh, that people do. We're trying to, to put it together as a chart. So if people want to contact us through the website um, and 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 give us the results of your tests and where you had them done and that sort of thing, we would like to be able to take that information in chart form to our legislators and say, look, this is not something that isn't happening that you can continue to ignore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just go to our website, sngawareness.weebly.com, and Weebly is W-E-E-B-L-Y, um, and you can, there's a contact there that'll come straight to me, and we'll, I'll put you on the list, can put people on the list if they want to get tested, and um, we actually... Uh, have collected some funding for people who can't, just can't afford the testing. So, Deborah, if you've got a great um, place that people can go to for that hair testing, please let me know because we've got one contact, but pretty expensive. So, uh, yeah, there's a Dr. Mora in Sacramento, and he's a natu- well, he's an MD, but he practices naturopathically. So, I can give you that contact information and probably put that on your website. Okay. What's how do you spell Dr. Mora? M O R A. Okay, I'll have to look that up. And um, so, I know. have his uh, contact information I can give to you later, but um, I uh, recommend him right now. And right. he does, I think, three different types of testing. But I think the hair analysis is a good basic, and it's the least expensive. So, um, and then so the when, other thing to do. So when people find, though, that they've got a hair full, you know, their, head, their hair is full of metals, as is their body, uh, are you saying that the zeolite really can take those metals out, or are you doing other things as well? Uh, no, I hadn't been tes- tested after I took the zeolite. I just know that within a month of taking the zeolite, I was a different person. I can, oh. I, in other words, I was bedridden and couldn't even get out of bed when there was heavy spraying. Now I can be out in it all day, and I don't get any of the symptoms I got before. That's amazing. I couldn't even drive in traffic because I was getting sick like I was going to pass out from the fumes from cars. I couldn't be in homes where they cooked or heated with natural gas. So those symptoms that I was having of multiple chemical sensitivities, which I was diagnosed with, have 
pretty much disappeared. And I'm going to tell you what I did. So okay. the first thing was that one product with the zeolite that I took, which they don't manufacture. I don't think the same one. So wait, will you sure. give your source again, please? It's Nutra. Nutra Medical. And it's on our website. I have okay. the link to it. And um, so if you and go to you, Environmental Voices. Would you give your website, Deborah? Would you give them your website now, please? Yes, it's environmentalvoices.org. And I have a little store section that just has a couple of websites on it. We don't get any money from it. I just have it there for people to be convenient. And so look down for um, it's Nutra Medical. Is okay. it N U T R I? Yes. Okay. I okay because I've got Nutra Medical up here on the screen. And just to let you know that Bill Deagle has his own radio show, which is really good. So those of you that want to listen to his radio show, you might. Uh, Check and where, where do people find that radio show? Is it on his website or? I think there is a link on that Nutra Medical website. If not, there's a number that you can call and they'll give you information. But I'm okay. pretty sure it's on that. Actually, site. yes, there is. I see it on this Nutra yeah. Medical website. There's a thing that says "Listen Live" on GNCLive.com. The Nutra Medical Report. Great. And there's yeah. a bunch of information. Great. Then there's call into the show studio live for comments, right. and questions. So Nutra Medical. And Lisa, you should call Bill. And call that 800 number and get on this show, too, and promote this event. Because I'm so excited about this event. So let's get back really quick. I want to go over this um, protocol because people are very sick out there, and a lot of them don't even realize how sick they are. So um, so testing first, then detox. And do your own research because there's different things you can do. I use the zeolite, but there's diatomaceous clay food grade and and there's a, another herb called NAC that helps. You just have to kind of do your own research. Um, the other thing is um, to build up your immune system. This is key. One of the reasons I was so weak and sensitive to these chemicals, I believe, was also because um, I had an eating disorder and I wasn't eating real food. Everything I ate was junk food or fast food. So I've changed that. And I cook huge pots of organic vegan soup. I eat salads. I eat lettuce. I eat vegetables. I eat fruits. Those are things that I didn't eat very often. So I built up my immune system by my diet. Um, you can also filter your air. There's little HEPA filter machines that you can get. And if you're, you know, they're heavy spraying outside, you might want to put that in the room where you're spending the most time in and, and filter the air. Change or even your put air one filter. in your main unit on your house. That's what we do. Yes. We added a HEPA filter to our regular filter uh, right. in 2013. I literally, I and mean, people say that, well, the stuff gets in the house anyway. Well, yeah, it does. But we, I could not go outside that year except for a few minutes at a time. And when I did, I'd come back in sick. And um, yeah. But we kept a HEPA filter on all the time. He changed and cleaned it regularly, and I could, yeah. I could survive inside. And I'll tell you how much difference it made. I did. I took some acorns and I planted them inside the house, put them on the windowsill to see how they would do inside the house as opposed to what was going on out in the yard, which the saplings that were growing out there looked horrible. They had holes in the leaves. They were they were limping along. And we were getting enough rain that they should have been doing okay. So inside, and I didn't even give them a lot of water inside. But on the windowsill, they looked great inside the house. Outside, mm. they looked horrible. Mm. Yep. And I've got photographs of all of that. So you can, that's the difference of, as to what you're breathing if you filter the air. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And so that's you're how I avoided said, going into... Go ahead. I'm sorry, Deborah. Uh, well, no. I, I, I that's how I avoided ask. going in... Oh. <laughs> I was just going to ask. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's a three-way here, Lisa. Yeah. How do you how do you get um, a HEPA filter? Are you saying you put it kind of where the on the by the furnace or something in, inside you your where you put your normal intake filter in your, okay. in your house? Where you, wow. everybody's house has a has a vent where the the air is pulled from, and then it gets heated and and put out through the registers. Okay. Well, anybody who's got that that's kind of fantastic. Cases. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, and so everybody has a filter on their heating system if they have forced hot air. Mm -hmm. And so he just added it. And now, it, you know, it'll reduce some of the efficiency of it if you've got two filters mm -hmm. on it. So mm -hmm. if you want to just put the HEPA filter on it, that's okay. And they're they're expensive. You know, I think they're $35 or so at Home Depot. But it, it really does make a difference. And then if you were to put a also a, some kind of ionizing filter or some sort of other air filter, that makes a difference too. And what is that? Yeah, like Deborah is saying, I mean, there are a lot of things that you can do to improve uh -huh. your health. I didn't know about zeolite or any of that stuff 
Um, but I started doing, well, I, I mean, I, the first year especially, I had a metallic taste in my mouth a lot. Um, and I just, so many things were going on immediately after the spraying started. I, I, and I was in really good shape. I'd lost about uh, 20 pounds or so, and I had built this, this several tiered garden on my hillside. And um, so I, you know, I was lifting up big, heavy rocks. I was in fabulous shape. And that was in like March of April or March and, well, I would say February and March of 2013. Mm-hmm. And then the planes started flying right over my house like crazy in the beginning of April. And I literally, on the first day that they came over the house, uh, and they were low, I mean, there were lots of them, mm-hmm. um, I started having, I couldn't breathe. I, and I I was born with asthma, so I, I have a tendency to, you know, things will affect me faster than other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But by the end of the uh, April 13th of 2013, I was struggling to breathe. By the next day, they came back on the 14th. Mm. By the next day, I was gasping for air and coughing like crazy mm. and um, doing a lot of research by then because I was I was really upset about what I saw going on. And then I could not, my garden is on a hillside, and I was walking up from the garden. By the time I got up to the top, I couldn't walk anymore. I, I had to lie down wow. on the ground. And wow. um, my heart was just beating erratically. And, I mean, I tend, I have an arrhythmia. But I can keep it under control with, you know, if I do the right things, if I eat on a regular basis and things like that. Um, mm-hmm. But I, my my heart went crazy, and um, so this was going, this went on for a few weeks, where the, you know, every time they would spray, my heart would start beating like crazy. I mean, just mm-hmm. erratically and hard. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, we I just I started drinking um, eventually a lot of rosemary. And, and a lot of, it was a combination of ginger, rosemary, lemon, and honey, and tea constantly. Mm-hmm. And that was the thing that built up my immune system so that I wasn't constantly sick. But, I mean, I would, if I went down to Sacramento to hand out flyers or anything like that, by the time I got back to Roseville to drive back up here, I would feel like I had the flu. I would, mm-hmm. my skin would crawl the way you do, like your skin hurts when you have the mm-hmm. flu. Mm-hmm. I, I just felt awful. And That's it was amazing. Easy quite a while to recover. And I'll, I'm going to tell you a real quick story. I went down to Sacramento one day to, to hand out flyers at some event. And um, I came home and the spraying up here in the foothills was just horrible that day. It was a Monday. It was September 7th, 2014, I believe. And it was just horrible. And I had a chicken that was not doing very well. And it seemed like, you know, she would, she'd be okay for a while. And then she would start to walk in circles. And she she was pushing herself off on one wing because she couldn't keep herself upright. And she'd twist her neck around in a, like a pretzel. And then mm-hmm. she'd straighten out. She'd be okay for a while. And then this would happen again. Well, I started to realize that she would do this on the heavy spray days. Mm-hmm. And I came home that day from wow. Sacramento, and that poor chicken was just going crazy. She oh, was wow. twisting herself up in knots. Her feet were totally atrophied. And she her wing was just a nub by that time because she had been pushing herself mm. off like that. And I used the knives for that night, and it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Oh, God. But I could sad. not watch her suffer any longer. And I knew at that point that she probably had heavy metal poisoning. She was wow. one of my oldest hens, and she had probably been pecking this stuff out of the dirt for a long time and breathing it in. Wow. And on that day, it was so bad that it was just mm. horrible, heartbreaking. So these things that you guys are talking about are super important because, as Deborah said, this is accumulating in our tissues. Unless we detox it, we're going to be doing some funny dances, and we don't want to be dying the dance of death from heavy metals, you know? Right. That's, and that's, I do want to add to be careful because we do need um, trace minerals in our body. So you have to listen to your body. And I don't take the zeolite now other than maybe a couple times a year. But um you just really have to listen to your body and and don't overdo it. I know I know somebody that takes a zeolite every single day, and I worry about that. But she says she does supplement with you know vitamins and minerals and mm-hmm. things. So be cautious. But well, that's a really good point. I didn't know that. Me, somebody recently told me about chaga tea, which is a mushroom, and, and mm-hmm. mushrooms are an amazing product. I've been doing research on them lately about their ability to do. Um, toxic cleanup on, on land, bioremediation, and then there's a there's a TED talk on with a scientist who's in the Bay Area who just thinks that mushrooms and and mycelia 
will be the key to cleaning up the planet. And, mm. and they can do the same thing for our bodies. And um, mm. so this chaga tea is, is interesting to me, and I'm experimenting with it. I just bought a different kind last night, and um, I really think I feel better. Using mm. Oh, I'll have to check so, that out. Yeah. And where do you they get don't that? Taste, I have two different kinds, and they don't taste quite the same. One is kind of good. One's not so good. But um, <laughs> it's but it does. I I drank some before I went to bed last night, and I could feel kind of like you know my immune system was compromised a bit, and I feel a lot better today. Wow. So where do you, where do you get chaga tea? Um, I ordered the first batch on Amazon, and it okay. was um, it tastes pretty good. It was expensive, twenty dollars for a little bag, I believe. And then last night, yesterday, I bought it at the local food co-op. And um, it's not quite as tasty, but it's uh, a much better price, about a quarter of the price, 43-something a pound. But, I mean, mm-hmm. I got a bag of it, and it was only a quarter of a pound, less than a quarter of a pound. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how do you prepare it? I just um, put it in my tea ball and mm-hmm. um, put it in with my – I make chai every day. That's another thing I do that I think really helps my immune system. Um so I just put it in with that. It actually enhances the taste, of the flavor of the chai, or just, you know, make it straight up like a wow. tea. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, and I mean, I chew on raw ginger. Whenever I feel like I'm, my immune system's compromised or I'm getting a cold, I, I put raw ginger in my mouth and I just bite down on it until it's no longer chewable and things like that. I mean, I've used all, I, I hardly ever go to a doctor. And just all these different things that I've learned through various activists and reading about stuff and just experimenting and come up with a lot of ways to stay well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was really sick the first year. So Yeah, I remember I met you and you weren't doing very good. Yeah. And the same way with me, doing some of these things has made all the difference in, in my life. I just can't even begin to tell you. One of the so, geoengineering oh, scientists... Um, told me about salt inhalers, Himalayan salt inhalers. I wrote to him, and I really just wanted him to admit what was going on, and I told him I feel so hopeless about what I see happening, and he did not deny this is happening. He, he's the only one who never said, no, you're, you're full mm-hmm. of it, you know, whatever. He didn't deny it, and he said, try this for your lungs. And, mm-hmm. and it was a, I ordered it because they found that in Poland uh, a long time ago, apparently, somebody realized that the kids who, people who were working in the salt mines, particularly the children who were working in the salt mines, did not have the respiratory issues that the rest of the population did, you know, with the fireplaces and coal being burned and everything. And um, so that was the history of it, and they realized it was the salt. So you can get these things, these salt inhalers, for 20 bucks online and put the Himalayan salt, and you just breathe it in. And I actually add peppermint essential oil and tea tree essential oil sometimes and just breathe it in, and it makes such a difference in my wow. ability to breathe. Wow. This is so good to know. I, I, th- th- this radio station has a way of ending a little bit early, and I know we're coming up to the time where we're not over yet, but we have about five to you know seven minutes. Um, I want to be sure that all the details of this event are out there in the public domain and so people know how to how to come and how to find out more about it. And Lisa, can you give us uh, any information that people might want to know about attending sure. this event? Yeah, it's um, January 13th, and um, it's going to be from 10 to 3 on the steps of the Capitol. We're going to be there a little bit early setting up, but basically, um, and, and most of it will happen between 10 and 2, and then between 2 and 3, we'll probably be wrapping it up. But we are going to, sp- going to spend some time, uh, I would say probably around 1, going to visit our legislative offices and giving them a packet of information that we're going to compile. And hopefully we'll we'll break into groups, you know, by people's districts so that we have somebody who's got some experience with either lobbying lobbying or public speaking in each group. And we'll also have a table set up where people can come and find people who already have groups established in their area or if they want to meet other people who are in their own area and there is no group established and they want to get together and start an organization. Mm -hmm. And, And our coalition is going to help people along the way to get their groups going and organized and we'll, we'll be like a hub for people so that we can stay well organized. And I think the, the point of this is to, to say to our government, look, we're not going away. This is a problem. You need to recognize it. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's a real thing that's happening here. And we are organizing. We are cooperating. We're overcoming our differences. And we are not going to stop. And that's the point of it. So it's um, January 13th on the Capitol steps in uh, Sacramento from 10 to 3. And um, 
we'll have 11 speakers. We've got four different music musicians coming. Um, so it's, it's going to be a great day, and I think we're probably going to get a great turnout. We have a Facebook site. Just look up California for Natural Skies. And uh, you'll see both the coalition and then the event. Um, actually, technically on Facebook, it's California for Natural Skies and event. And you just click on there, and we'll keep you updated on the information. So the coalition, that's not Sierra Nevada Geoengineering Awareness. What is the coalition? The coalition is all, are all of the groups. I, I brought all these groups together, these leaders of groups, and I said, Let's okay. can we all work together to make this happen? So it's made up of SoCal Skywatch, Reno Skywatch, uh, Sonoma County Geoengineering Awareness, Tuolumne County, the San Francisco group, uh, my group, the, um, let's see, South Bay Geoengineering Awareness, Environmental Voices, uh, Chico Skywatch. So we're all working together. And we have a great team of people who are we're on this private thread. I know that you know this, but I'm yes. just saying it for the purposes of the public. Yeah. Um, we're working together. And, I mean, when something needs to be done and I say, you know, is, is can somebody out there get this done? Somebody jumps in and does it so effectively. It, it's an amazing team to work That's with. That's fantastic. So this coalition is going to go forward beyond this event. Is that right? It seems like it needs to. I, it's not something Absolutely, I planned on when it started, Lisa. but I think it needs to. Yeah. I think that we can pull this whole thing together, organize this state. California um, really affects policy. Cal- what happens in California does not stay in California. It usually sweeps the country. Mm-hmm. And, and we have an opportunity in this state to really m- have an effect everywhere. And if we can pull together, organize, and, or- and just coordinate, we can make such a difference for everybody. Mm-hmm. I agree, and I would like Very to see important. a Georgia for natural skies and, and you know, each state take on and you do know, what we're doing. We're the leader you, in this. There, Lisa, uh, you've got a very good point there, but there are groups all over the country. And I'd like to have some of those groups on here. But if we could affect this, at, you know, once we get our, our bearings here in California, perhaps we can connect with the groups nationally because right. – that's been the problem is that there has not been a cohesiveness between groups. And I think that the idea of overlooking any differences that we may have as far as climate change to just focus on the fact that this is happening and to reach out, you know, nationally, uh, think of the power that we could have. That's right. Yeah. The, the, you know, the only thing is, you know, this is the timing is of, of the essence as Michael Murphy was on last week and he was explaining that it's going to, we've got like a five year window before this um, agreement that was signed in Paris, if it does take effect, which it's supposed to, w- until it does take effect. So we do have some time, but not a whole lot of it. And, and so it's really great that we're mobilizing now. And I California just, has no time because th- this is causing drought. They're, they know that geoengineering causes drought. They can do, they can make drought happen if they want to. They have the technology they can. to do oh, this. Oh, absolutely. Clearly they've and, done that. You know, that's, and we that do was not have time to mess around. That was yeah. admitted in the Senate report that Dane Wigington put on his site from like 1975 that one of the effects listed was drought. They know very well what they're doing. You know, not yeah. maybe not all of the government is privy to this. But that document shows that they're not ignoramuses. They know what's going on. Um, I did notice something recently that the, one of the last mainstream media articles that came out on solar radiation management geoengineering mentions that it could have an effect on plant life and trees. And, it, and it's the first time I've seen that as one of the potential side effects. So clearly somebody's watching what we're documenting. And, you know, yeah, like and Rosalind Peterson uh, wrote a big article. In fact, I'll try to get a copy to you, how it's affecting agriculture, because you're blocking out sunlight that's needed for photosynthesis. So there's huge crop reduction. That's one of the primary uh, income resources for the state of California is crop production. It's declining at least a third percent because they're not getting sunlight. And because of the lack of sunlight, we're getting bugs uh, that are killing our trees and our blight. plants. I'm getting blight. People don't mind. understand the consequences. It's not just a health issue. It involves the entire planet and all life on the planet. And, and so we soil. Need they don't even to get know active. all the stuff there is in the soil. They don't even know. They've barely begun to scratch the surface of their knowledge of the microorganisms in soil, and yet here we are destroying it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense at all. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make any sense at all. That's so we sure. do have some good news, though. 
And Can I that? share a little good news? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, well, first of all, people around the world are getting out and speaking out, and I'm so happy that people are starting to take action on this. Um, Dane Wigington and his group have put up another um, sign. I don't know if you've seen a picture of that in Dixon, California, a billboard. There's probably about 10 billboards all over the United States and one in Canada. Right. And so you can go onto his website, geoengineeringwatch.org, and look at pictures of all the billboards. I mean, that's so exciting to me, especially because it's right down by Davis where the Sierra Club wouldn't let me speak on the issue. So I'm yeah. so glad that there's a big billboard there. Right. And then Mike Murphy's coming out with his new film. I can't wait till that gets done. And he's waiting to raise the money for testing for the um, behind the planes, uh, the air behind planes, so that we have factual documentation that this is going on mm-hmm. and it can be linked up. There's lawsuits going on in Canada, in uh, the United States as well. And so things are happening. Mm-hmm. Things are happening. Because because of put out a activists. great article in the UK group. They just uh, made a direct correlation between the fact that these Airbuses are leaving the factory without certain pylons on them, but that they've documented with high with telephoto lenses that these pylons are actually on commercial jets at uh, at Heathrow. So they they're ready for a lawsuit because they've made a compl- they've got they've got communication from the manufacturer of Airbus that these things are leaving the factory without these things on them. So they're being retrofitted. Wow, yeah, and that's absolute proof. Wow. I know. I so going on. we are making the activists that have been working on this for all these years and and the people getting involved. We're really making a difference. Yeah, and it's not going to happen we overnight. Are but get we, it we can't stop trying. We have to. Exactly. No, we can't. So I think, I think, Deborah, what you said before, if you can say it again to people that we're in a long battle, it's going to take a while. Can you, can you, can you speak to that? Yeah, it is. It's, it, you know, we're dealing with the United Nations, with the Pentagon, with, with people at high levels, and it is going to be a long battle. And it's been, I've been involved in this uh, since 2006, and people like Rosalind Peterson and Dane were, have been involved even much longer than I. So, um, but I am seeing things rapidly now. I mean, we have Earth Day events and the Green Festival we just had for three days at the Cow Palace, and people are kind of coming up and they know about this issue. And the thing is, they just don't know the consequences, and they, a lot of them aren't doing anything. It's really frustrating because we need the people to get out and do something. I don't care what it is. You know, I had little business cards printed up at vistaprint.com and you can get them free and just pay the shipping which is six dollars and something and put your favorite website i've got about four websites on there Mm -hmm. and i leave them on cars i hand them out when i go to restaurants and and leaving it it says a little thing like um how is geoengineering affecting your health ladies that's one of my favorites Go ahead, Lisa. One of my favorites is to see. I've seen people stick things on the insides of bathroom stalls. Yeah. You guys, you, you've heard it's everything now. So go out there and do your part <laughs> to end geoengineering. Deborah Whitman and Lisa Thomas, thank you so much and for being on the show. show up on January 13th. <laughs> That's for sure. So show your support. We'll Thanks, see you there. Kate. Thanks, Debbie. On what we do.